Welcome everybody and thank you for joining the session on the new communication on progress, introduction to the anti-corruption section. My name is Bernard Frey. I'm Senior Manager on SDG Impact and Reporting at the UN Global Compact. And today I'm joined by my colleague Moramay Navarro and other colleagues from the Communication on Progress team. This session is being recorded and can be accessed on demand on the Academy platform of the UN Global Compact, along with other sessions on the new Communication on Progress. Please direct all questions to the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Questions that will not be answered today will be answered in writing in a follow-up to the session. Our aim for today is to provide context and information about the anti-corruption section of the Communication on Progress questionnaire, as well as to answer your questions. Please note that the overall structure and content of the questionnaire have been introduced in previous sessions. You can find those recordings on governance, human rights, labor, and environment sections on the website of the UN Global Compact Academy. Today, we will only provide a few, uh, a recap on the overall structure of the questionnaire. If you attended previous sessions, please bear with us for a few minutes before we deep dive into the anti-corruption section. The questionnaire of the communication on progress is organized in five sections, governance, human rights, labor, environment, and, <clears throat> and anti-corruption. The governance section provides a cross-cutting overview of the company's sustainability governance structure and processes, while the remaining four sections go into greater detail on topics connected to the 10 principles of the UN Global Compact. Within each section of the questionnaire, the questions are grouped in different subsections as they typically address the processes and policies that demonstrate a company's commitment to advance sustainability topics connected to the 10 principles, efforts undertaken to prevent or mitigate negative social and environmental impact, performance indicators, and remediation and reporting mechanisms to address grievances and reflect on lessons learned. I would like you to recall that questions in the governance section refer to processes and structures that also help companies address anti-corruption topics. To the right, you can see the various elements from the governance section that are also applicable to the anti-corruption section, such as a company code of conduct and processes to assess risk. Similar to the previous section of the questionnaire, the anti-corruption section has questions that address topics such as commitment, prevention, performance, and remediation response and reporting. Within the commitment subse subsection, companies will be asked about the anti-corruption policies and compliance programs. Let's take a look at those questions. This question asks about the company's anti-corruption compliance program. Anti-corruption programs can help organizations prevent and detect risks and carry out sanctions if needed. Anti-corruption programs can cover a broad range of topics and might include procedures on how to handle bribes, gifts, and conflicts of interest. An anti-corruption compliance program may require dedicated staff to develop and implement it, as well as to communicate commitments to business partners and employees. It is important that continuous monitoring and improvement occurs and that appropriate measures are taken in the, event of, in the event the program is violated. These features should be explicitly included in the compliance program. AC11 asks for the year that the compliance program was last reviewed. It is important to review policies regularly. Policy, policies should be dynamic and can change over time according to new information, regulation, an evolving understanding of the roles and responsibilities of business or in reflection of lessons learned. Question AC2 aims to get a better sense of the processes laid out by the company to guide how employees react in situations of doubt or in situations where there might be a conflict of interest, for instance, regarding gifts, donations, or sponsorships. Concrete guidance on how to handle potential conflicts of interest provides a clear standard for appropriate behavior 
and should also include processes for managing and reporting potential incidents, should they arise. In the prevention subsection, questions address two main topics, training and compliance, training and compliance monitoring. Namely, what is a company doing to prevent and ensure co corruption is an inhabitant? AC3 aims to capture who in your organization receives training on anti-corruption and integrity, including employees and suppliers linked to your organization. Training can be a critical component of preventing and identifying instances of anti-corruption across a company's value chain. Training should cover a variety of topics, but should be tailored to specific stakeholders and futures of anti-corruption to be as effective as possible. Companies that select the answer option other should provide additional information in the space provided. AC31 appears if a company answers any option in AC3 besides no training provided or not applicable. Providing consistent training on anti-corruption topics helps employees and senior management remain knowledgeable and mindful about potential incidents of anti-corruption as well as up to date with any recent changes in company policy. AC4 asks about if and how the company monitors its anti-corruption compliance program. Without tracking the effectiveness of compliance practices, a company can't learn and assess how it can drive continuous improvement across its operation and value chain. While some organizations may be able to monitor through self-evaluations, Others are best served through independent monitoring or through custom mechanisms. Companies should use the space provided for additional information in the questionnaire to detail the type of monitoring performed. The performance subsection of the anti-corruption questions focuses on the reporting of incidents within the company. AC5 asked about the number and nature of anti-corruption incidents that have occurred within the reporting period. Incidents of corruption can present significant adverse consequences for an organization and preparations should be made so that such incidents are handled well. Impacts are mitigated, lessons are learned, and measures can then be applied to improve the program. Examples of corruption may include commercial bribery and kickbacks, extortion, and solicitation, collusion, or embezzlement, among others. It's very important to collect information on incidents or, sus or suspected incidents of corruption so that organizations can comprehensively understand each specific situation and drive continual improvement of the anti-corruption programs. This question also allows you to answer, choose to not disclose. If you select this option, you will need to provide a brief explanation. Organizations can also select unknown if this metric is not measured. The final section in the, in the anti-corruption section, response, remediation, and reporting, aims to capture information about measures, collective action, and practical actions within your organization. Question AC6 refers to the measures taken by the organization to address suspected incidents of corruption. When violations are reported or suspected, it is crucial to address them to establish credibility of the anti-corruption program to all stakeholders. Suspected and confirmed cases of corruption present a good opportunity for organization to collect such data and utilize it within the program to, to drive improvement. For this question, organizations should report all measures taken in the reporting period to address any suspected or confirmed incidents. Measures can include activities such as carrying out regular reviews of the anti-corruption program, including internal audits, and providing resulting reports to senior management and the board to facilitate actions to improve the program. Organizations that choose to report other will be prompted to specify the actions taken. Organizations can also report not applicable, no incidents in the reporting period, to indicate that they had not no suspected or confirmed incidents of corruption in the reporting period. The purpose of question AC, 
Seven is to understand if your organization is engaging in collective action, either through one of the UN Global Compact's local network initiatives or through another organization in your business environment. The UN Global Compact uses the World Bank's definition of collective action against corruption, which states that collective action is a collaborative and sustained process of cooperation between stakeholders. It increases the impact and credibility of individual action, brings vulnerable individual players into an alliance of like-minded organizations, and levels the playing field between competitors. Collective action can complement or temporarily substitute for and strengthen weak local laws and anti-corruption practices. Collective action initiatives can take on various forms ranging from short-term agreements to long-term initiatives with external enforcement. Companies that participate in such initiatives can pursue their common objectives more effectively in a joint and concentrated effort than they can individually. Collective action initiatives can be formed either in the private sector alone, for instance, SMEs requesting harmonized supplier standards from larger companies, or involve public-private partnerships. While this collective action approach may not be applicable to all organizations in all locations, companies that respond yes to this question will be asked to provide additional information describing the nature of their collective action initiatives. If your organization does not currently engage in collective action against corruption, please feel free to utilize the B20 Collective Action Hub, maintained by the Basel Institute on Governance which offers an open database of existing initiatives around the world. As in the section on human rights, labor, and environment, the last question of the anti-corruption section is open narrative format, where companies can provide further context and draw additional relevant information not covered in the previous questions, such as additional activities impl implemented or goals set. We also have a list of resources and guidance to help you better understand and disclose on topics covered in this section of the questionnaire. This information will be included in the guidebook of the communication on progress. You go to guide for questions on the questionnaire. You may, you you go to guide for questions on the questionnaire. Please feel free to use this and other resources to assist you as you work through the questionnaire. Thank you very much for your attention today. We will now